Okay, I'm not Fuzzy Cat, and this is my let's play of. Mega Man and Base. Now, Mega Man Base was originally released on the Super Nintendo in Japan, or I guess we used to call it the Super Fancom under the name Rockman and Forte. They never released it in North America under the Super Nintendo because by the time they would have released it, the Super Nintendo would have been dead. Pretty much. So they released it later on the Game Boy Advance in 1998, I believe. And that's the version I'm going to play this time. There's not really too much difference between the two games. Other than the fact that with the GBA with the smaller screen, you, it's harder to see stuff at the bottom or the top of the screen. But, a new feature is you can either play as Mega Man or Base. Both characters operate differently, so I'm going to be doing a playthrough of both of them. First, Mega Man. You can slide, and charge, and all this basic stuff. So, Mega Man's basically, you can jump, you can slide, you can charge, and the L and R buttons will switch weapons if I have them. So this is the intro stage. The story of this game will be made pretty much by the time I get to that point. By the end of the stage, pretty much. So, this stage is pretty much like... There's the moles that I hate so much. This is mostly Fireman stage. These things you can't destroy, nor can you stop them from spouting, and they're hard to jump over. See, this is really Fireman. I mean, the little fry guy things. Over here, the moles come back. That now saving just meant I meant I found a checkpoint in the game. The game has to do that because the Super Nintendo, well, the Game Boy Advance couldn't really copy exactly what the Super Nintendo did. So this part is, well, it's a water park and the water's going up and down. When you do this part, the water stops moving. And now we're in what looks like Toad Man stage, only the rain pushes you whether you're on the ground or not. And it's annoying because when these, if these things shoot you, well, they may push you back into a pit. Because you have to be on the very edge of a place to make the jump, or you might not make it. There's the Sniper Joes. And, of course, that means the boss is somewhere over here, and there's a picture of trouble on the wall. You've gone too far, King. I won't allow you to violate this robot museum. I've downloaded all the data of these battle robots. Now I can create an invincible robot army. Since you are a robot, you are qualified to join us if you want to. Well, it seems that your friend has arrived. I have no time to waste on you anymore. Wait, King. Silence! He just killed Proto Man. He cut him in half with one swipe. Proto Man! It's just a scratch. I'll take care of this. You're gonna have to life for repairs. I appreciate your arrogance, but I have no time for you. I'll allow the green devil to handle you. 
Really? The green devil? Out of all things, you have to fight me with the devil. So, what Mega Man should do is jump and just use normal shots to open the barrier in front and then shoot the core. Green Devil will attack by throwing things at you from his hands and dropping the same types of bubbles from the ground. After you open him, you should be able to get two shots on the inside, yet if you stop shooting the middle so much, um, it will close back up even before it fully opens. And I'm probably going to lose this fight. See? I don't think I have to go through the cutscene again. But I mean, King's got to be pretty damn powerful if he cut Pokemon in half in one shot. See, I took too long to shoot it again, and... So time your jumps, so you can avoid evil green goo. The green devil doesn't do much else. It's a lot easier than the Grey Devil in Mega Man X5 and the Devil in 1. I'm not sure if the Mega Man and Mega Man 3. You can touch the Green Devil's arm, but you can't touch his body or his feet. Touching the arm will not harm you. Good thing too, because with his arm, he took off more than half the screen. And on the Super Nintendo, we took up less than that, and you can actually see what's going on. If you get hit, you're probably not going to make the next hit on him. But, defeating him shouldn't be too difficult. Since this game didn't have passwords, it's got save files, so I'll overwrite this one. Got four save files, and a quick save. Now, the... Robot Master screen is kind of different. There are five Robot Masters in the middle of the screen, and then there's the thing, and then there's King's Fortress. These uh, three are the only ones I can take on. Defeating this, defeating these robots will unlock other robots I can face. Starting off with Cold Man, Ground Man, and Astro Man. I'm going to take on Cold Man, and yes, Astro Man was also in Mega Man 8, and there is another robot that was also in Mega Man 8 that will... Be, that's also in this game, but it won't appear until much later. So this is Cold Man, the basic ice robot. That thing over there I can destroy, but I need a... But I think I need a, the fire weapon. Bubble bats! And Mets. You can destroy... Oh, you grab them with a special weapon. There's a CD over there, which I can't get without the fire weapon. CDs contain data of all Robot Masters that have been in previous games, including the game... Including the Genesis games. Like, uh... Like the ones in the Wily Tower. Wily... Wily Wars and the Wily Tower at the end of that game. And, uh, there's a hundred CDs in the game, and if I jumped high enough, I could make it over there. If I had Rush Coil, I could do that, too. This CD, only Mega Man can grab. Base cannot slide. So, I'll show you the CD, I guess, at the end of this level. This snowman, I just shoot normal shots in his head. He shoots little snowmen from the ceiling. And when they get low enough, he jumps, and he may jump a second time, and maybe even a third time. But... The little snowman can block your shots. Just 
destroying him, we'll let you go to the next part. And I'll see you in the next part. See you then.